Hello, welcome, welcome to you all, howdy, uh, this is Bewilderbeast doing another live drawing tutorial, awesome, so hello, I am Ian from Bewilderbeast and today I'll be showing you how to draw a cat a pult, a catapult, yeah, you can hopefully see what I did there. Um, we're, we're mad as a bag of, uh, bag of bats around here. So, um, hopefully by the end of the pic, by the end of the picture, yes, by the end of the picture, by the end of the video, you're going to have something a bit stupid to, uh, take away and color, color in very silly picture. So what do you do if you're small and furry and you've got a long tail and pointy up ears and you want to catch birds, i.e. if you're a cat, you can't fly. Uh, so you can try and chase them when they're on the ground. If they see you coming, then they can easily fly away. Um, there's only one thing for it. To keep up, you're going to have to learn to fly. And that is exactly what this little moggy is going to do today. So today, whoop, you will need uh, our family favourite pencil. I'll be using this pencil just because it uh, hopefully doesn't run out. Uh, an eraser, rubber, one of those fellas. Mine's a little bit mucky, but they were about that. It's lasted years, so uh, old faithful. Uh, what else have we got? Piece of white paper. I've just got some A4 printer paper, as good as anything for this. Um, a black pen. I've got this artist sketching pen here, just because it's uh, quite nice and thick, but you can use anything, a biro, fine liner, felt tip, whatever you, whatever you feel like. Um, something that we can go over the lines with later and uh, something to draw a straight line with we only need to draw well you only you don't need to draw any perfectly straight lines if you don't want to but um i've got a ruler here um and you can use a ruler or, or any anything like the edge of a mat or anything to make a straight line okay awesome so let's get started let's get right in there so we're going to start drawing our catapult and we're going to start off i'm going to use my ruler to start with we're going to go to the bottom of the page um, I'm coming up, I don't know what would that be, maybe an inch and a half or so from the bottom of the page, but come up, basically we want to leave the majority of the page above this line uh, clear. So set the ruler down, I'm just going to draw a rough straight line across there with my pencil. Marvellous, look at that, as if by magic. Alright, and now to start drawing some wheels. So I'm going to look roughly halfway along the page, I'm going to mark roughly the center point of that line it's as i say it's only rough doesn't matter too much really and then to one side of that center line i'm going to come what's that maybe maybe a four four centimeters or, or or an inch and a half or thereabouts over to one side i'm going to draw a circle uh don't worry if it's not a perfect circle and you see i've gone below the line there that's fine and if your circle is all wobbly and all over the place just go around a few times we're just going to get it roughly like that Lovely job. Okay, same on the other side. Come a little bit to the right of this uh, center point. And we'll whip round into a circle there. Okay. Doesn't matter if they're not perfectly round, just go around them a few times. Okay, cool. Right, next up, we are going to go into the middle of the circle and just draw a very small little circle. And the same in the middle of the other one. There's like two big eyes at the minute. Looks a bit weird, that's fine. And then I'm gonna do another one around those. Like so. Don't worry if they're not exactly in the middle or whatever, they're absolutely fine, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Okay, so if you're just joining us today, good day, I'm Ian. Uh, welcome to a Bewilderbeast drawing tutorial. We are just starting off drawing a catapult. Um, uh, if you if you're, going to join in you can easily catch up uh, and if you're watching this later then please do uh, send me a, a, a picture of what you've drawn um, if you want to color it in that would be even better you can tag us on at Beast Art on Facebook or at Beast on Instagram uh, love to see what you guys draw I had some great ones for the uh, for the scapegoat last week and for the uh, turbo pig the week before so thank you very much to everybody who sent one of those through okay next bit we're going to draw a line coming right the way across here now you can use a ruler again if you want I'm gonna do it freehand so you can see what I'm doing a bit more easily but I'm just gonna come roughly sort of 
halfway up these two circles, uh, maybe in line with the bottom of these sort of middle circles that I drew. And we're going to start outside of this left hand circle, and come across roughly straight line all the way across. Don't worry about overlapping because we're going to be rubbing some of it out later. And basically, we're drawing a beam at the bottom of the uh, catapult. So I'm going to put a line up there and a line up there to make like a very long thin rectangle. Now I'm going to join those two up. So again, I'm coming across. If you need to come across in a couple of uh, pen pencil strokes, that's absolutely fine. Again, like I say, you can use your use your ruler uh, if you like. Okay, great. So we've got the base. Let's go. So we've got roughly halfway between these two wheels. Yeah, mark a little halfway point and I'm just going to draw a line straight up from there. I'm only going to do it lightly because we're not actually going to be drawing this line. It's just a guide. You see what I mean? You can go as high as you like. You can go right off the edge of the page. I've gone really right off the edge of the page. Mark the bit up there. Never mind. Um, and then we're going to draw. Uh, I'm, I'm going to come. You can come as high or as low on this next bit as you like. I'm going to come about there. I'm just going to mark a little line. About that high up and then again we're drawing another beam so I'm going to draw the top of the beam across there it's more of a pillar okay and then I'm just going to come down I'm going to come down a couple of little bits again if you want you can use a ruler it doesn't really matter I'm obviously going without a ruler wonderful all right easy peasy okay now let's uh, Let's come down a little bit from the top of the pillar. I'm just going to come maybe half a centimeter down. Mark a little line across there on either side. And I'm going to come to the middle of my left hand wheel. I'm going to come marking up from the center a straight line up should be about in the middle of the wheel at the top. Same on the other side on this wheel. Just mark a line about about in the middle at the top of the sort of peak of the wheel where it curves around at the very top bit there and then I'm just going to diagonally go from the top of this wheel to that little mark I made a minute ago so up we come absolute doddle lovely job same on the other side so I'm going to you can either start at the top and come down to the wheel or start at the wheel and go up and our catapult starting to get some shape to it a little bit actually it probably looks more like a tent on wheels at the minute so uh, maybe not very catapult like just yet but that's all right and we're drawing more beams basically here so another beam has come up so I'm just going to draw a diagonal line up here which is parallel to that line we drew a moment ago I'm going to do the same on this side roughly if you can roughly the same width on both sides Okay, but again, it doesn't really matter if it's not the same width, just here to have fun. Awesome, okay. Now, what else should we do? Let's do something so that if you were, I don't know, an ancient Roman or something, uh, and you were using this catapult, you've got to be able to wind it up to get the power to fire whatever this catapult's going to fire. So we're going to draw the winch next which is in the middle here, and where we made that little mark earlier for the center of our pillar, just above it, you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw a little bit of a small circle, maybe roughly the same size as the circles we drew in the middle of the uh, two wheels earlier. And again, I'm going to draw a little bit of a bigger circle around it. And then I'm going to draw a bigger circle again. Maybe this time, maybe about the size of 50p coin on, on my one doesn't matter if yours is bigger or smaller all right just looks like a, a third wheel doesn't it uh, well let's add some sausage shapes to it to make the spokes something for the guys to grip onto to wind it round. so nice and easy we'll just draw a little sausage shape up there and we'll draw one at the bottom so we're going to do completely opposite down here and we'll do one on the side and one on the other side don't worry if they're not all the same size or the same width or anything like that. Doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. All right. Now we're going to draw one 
two, three, and four in the middle. So if it's helpful, you can draw a little diagonal line across there very lightly. But if you're confident, just go roughly in the middle here and draw a sausage shape. So sort of poking out there, same on the bottom left, and you can do the same on the bottom right. Something like that, same on the top left. And look at that, marvelous. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, if you're if you're just joining us, this is uh, uh, Ian from Baroda Beast. I'm drawing a catapult with you all today. Uh, so uh, you'll see where the the cat part of the catapult comes in in a bit. But so far, we've just drawn the frame of the catapult, and we're just going to add on the firing arm next. Uh, so uh, if you're joining along, or if you're if you're drawing at home after the video. Uh, do do tag us in any pictures you draw of this um, at Bewilderby Start on Facebook or uh, at Bewilderby Beast on Instagram. Love to see them. Okay, next bit we're going to do the firing arm, the big lever that that launches and things from the catapult. Okay, so I'm going to come over to this right hand side, to this beam here. I'm just going to come roughly halfway along the beam and make a little mark. Okay. And then I'm going to come over to this wheel and where the beam meets the wheel, hopefully you can see that on the uh, on the screen there, I'm going to come from there, I'm going to draw diagonally straight across to that little mark I made a second ago, okay? So straight across, again, if you, if you want to use a ruler, absolutely fine, but you can do it freehand, that's no bother. And then I'm going to come slightly below that, to make it basically we're drawing another beam again you'll be you'll be sick of beams at this rate uh, okay coming across don't worry about overlapping everything at the minute that's all fine okay now looking at that it's not going to launch anything very far at all so got to go beyond beyond into the far beyond okay so we're going to carry on that line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the right hand side of this wheel and I'm just going to come up from the right hand side of this wheel and I'm just going to draw a little a little bit of a line there just to give me a guide on how far I should be going okay just a rough guide so I'm going to continue the line on into space and I'm going to stop when I'm roughly in line with the outside right hand side of that wheel same on the underside there we have it okay now we've got we've just drawn two parallel lines going a diagonal up here as you can see we can draw another parallel line again going on the same diagonal but it's going to be slightly above this top line okay you'll see what I mean here so I'm going to draw that across there see what I mean that is on the same angle as this diagonal line that we drew here okay this is going to be making up the the sort of bucket that the the catapult has things loaded into to uh, to fire if the catapult was being used to i don't know besiege some lord's castle or something hundreds of years ago and all the rest of it but uh we're not besieging any castles today as far as i'm aware so instead we we're, we're going to be filling it with something other than uh, rocks and flaming missiles and whatever else so now to make it sort of bucket shaped, basically this is going to its kind of look like a massive spoon, which um, sounds a bit silly, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. We're going to draw a sort of half circle coming underneath here, okay? So you'll see what I mean here, sort of half circle round. Lovely job. Now, if you want, you can make it a deeper circle. You can do whatever you like there. I'm going to leave mine like that, and I'm just going to make sure these diagonal lines join up to that sort of bucket end okay cool very good very good right so we've got a catapult massive problem i've just realized we've got no cat every catapult needs a cat so let's start drawing that cat and the easiest way or not the easiest way an easy way to do this is just you can see, we're going to be putting our cat in the firing bucket here you can see that's on a bit of an angle so to make it slightly easier to, to draw that cat I'm just going to turn my page 
a little bit until this line here and given that these lines are on the same angle is basically horizontal in front of me okay so if I was to put a ruler across here you see I'm sort of roughly horizontal on from from me at the moment okay right let's get this cat body drawn okay so it's going to be sitting nicely in this little bucket here so I'm going to draw uh, let's go for a little bit of a sort of egg shape all right you make your cat as big or as small as you like I'm going sort of so big that's all good okay uh, that's going to be my cat's body okay if you want it to be a little bit of a tubbier cat you can make the circle slightly wider or if you want a skinnier cat you can go a bit more uh, of a narrow sort of oval shape uh, I, I like I like quite a plump cat here that's all right okay then we're going to draw a circle above it it's going to be the cat's head and this circle is going to overlap the body a little bit okay all right don't worry how big your cat's head is oh I've got quite a big cat's head it's gonna be one top heavy moggy all right um, I found out a random fact uh, about cats uh, when I was uh, uh, looking up cats as you do uh, apparently they sweat through their paws who knew well you do you all do now so uh, congratulations um, and little known fact cats are afraid of trees if you don't know why it's because of their bark but um good good little joke for you there you can uh, you can have that one for free all right let's uh let's draw our cat's helmet because if you're going to be fired out of a catapult safety first guys all right we talked about this before on the roller skating go and the uh, turbo pig and all these other things got to be safe when you uh, when you do these extreme sports all right so easy way to do that is just come roughly halfway down your cat's head all right i'm just going to mark a little mark there a little mark there and we're going to come in from either side slightly don't come in loads but we're just going to now follow the curve of his head but slightly inside this outer line you'll see what i mean when i do this so i'm following the curve around a bit okay great and you can sort of curve off those corners a little bit if you like and now we're going to draw the, uh, the top of the uh, helmet coming around okay so you don't need to go like massively outside the shape of the head a helmet's still going to be fairly close fitting to the head but that's fine so I'm just going to draw a bit of a helmet round there like so looks pretty weird at the minute that's absolutely fine don't worry it's a pretty weird thing for a cat to be wearing full stop so um, that's fine all right um, cats got pointy ears don't fit under helmets very well so we're going to poke them through so let's draw let's come over onto the left hand side of our our moggy here and uh, we'll go for a little pointy ear there you just do a triangle and another one on the other side marvelous all right um, I don't know if it's uh, like it with you guys around here. It's pretty warm here today. I've had to shut the door to uh, do this so you didn't get loads of random outside sound. So um, I am getting a bit warm. Uh, if this cat's warm, uh, I've got a little, little, another little fact for you. What do cats like to eat on a hot day? Anyone? A mice cream cone. Mice cream cone. Yeah. No. Okay. Never mind. Tough crowd. All right. So we're drawing the ears. And we're going to give a little bit of a curved line show that these ears are poking up through the helmet marvelous look at that you can do bigger ears if you want you've got a big big pointy cat ears but uh that's that's how my cat rolls like that looks looking good all right let's uh let's give him a nose so just come into the middle of the face you do a little upside down triangle like that okay and given these smiley big smiley cheeks so one there they look kind of like fishing hooks a little bit if you if you think about it like that like a hook coming around and one on the other side and eyes always helpful to see what you're doing generally most people uh, enjoy having eyes so i've heard anyway uh there so two little circles a little dot in the middle wonderful 
See, it looks kind of weird at the minute, but that's fine. Don't worry, we're getting there. Okay. Cats have got sort of, um, not not just the whiskers, but also sort of fluffy bits coming out the side of their face often. So to do that, don't worry about this line that's coming down here, but we're gonna, I'm going to come to the bottom of the helmet, and I'm going to do some zigzags out. So we're going to zigzag out, and I'm going to make the zigzag slightly smaller as we get towards the bottom of the chin. You'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to come out, down. I'm going to do three on each side, I think. Give them some nice fluffy, fluffy cheeks. Like so. Lovely. Um, and I think we'll have our cat be sort of fairly casually hanging into the basket. So we're going to draw some arms coming down. Now, I'm going to draw sort of, sort of sausage shape arms, but I'm going to curl round at the bottom here uh, to come over the top of the lip of this bucket here. And you'll sort of mean by a sausage shape here, sort of curving round like that. And I'm going to, when I get to the top of the, at the top of the bucket, I'm just going to carry on past it a little bit, and we'll be rubbing out that little line in the middle bit later. Do the same on the other side. If you want, you can change the angle that the sausage uh, sort of shape comes down. Maybe I'll change the angle and I'll make it slightly smaller. We'll see. Something like that. Okay. And don't forget to give, to give them a couple of little lines for the paws at the bottom. Lovely. You can even put his claws coming out if you want, if he's really gripping on, but see how you go. Um, what else should we do? Let's give him a tail. And you can choose which side to put your tail on. I'm going to put my tail on the right-hand side and go mad. Do a, do a tail going any shape, you, any sort of curled round shape you like. I'm going to have mine, it's going to come out like a weird sort of S, you can't say it, S shape, something like that. You can make it a long tail, a short tail, whatever you like. Okay. Um, and let's give him some whiskers. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three little dots in his little puffy little cheeks here. Okay. See what I mean? Um, you can do them randomly. They don't have to be in exactly the same place or anything. And then from each of those dots, I'm just going to flick outwards. So flick, two, three. You do the same on the other side. Don't worry if they're not matching exactly. It doesn't matter. It looks better if they don't, actually. Two. And third whisker there as well. Don't worry if one's a bit wobbly or squiggly or anything like that. Um, now, he's got the helmet on, sort of. What about giving him a little bit of a chin strap? So you can actually follow the line of the circle we drew earlier. And you can just make it a little bit thicker. And we'll make it even more thicker later when we draw over this in pen. And there's a, I'm going to draw a little bump under his chin to show that he's got the, like a little chin strap holder thing there. Okay. See what I mean? All right. And I think this moggy is a little bit stripy. So easy way to do some simple stripes is I'll show you up here is just to do very quick, well you don't have to do it quick if you don't want, but we're just going to sort of zigzag up and down to a point, okay, you see what I mean, zigzag to a point, zigzag to a point, alright, so I'm going to do that on my cat, I'm going to start with the larger end at the outside of his body, and I'm going to zigzag into a point, and one there, and on the opposite side, zigzag to a point, okay, You'll see later when we tidy this up and rub a few bits out, it looks looks a bit uh, zigzaggy and uh, a bit more like stripes. All right, and um, you can even you can do a couple on his on his legs as well if you like. A couple there. Let me put one there on his front paws. And then for the tail, I suggest just doing some sort of zigzags right the way across. I'm going sort of stripey tail on mine. Have a job, sort of. A little bit like a tiger. Cats are mini tigers in some regards, I suppose. Uh, um, thankfully, not quite as heavy or with as big a, bigger mouths, but um, yeah, we get away with that. That's good. Um, and let's put a, a go fast stripe on his helmet. Always helpful to have a go fast stripe, so just a couple of lines up there. Perfect. 
if like me you think maybe hmm, I don't know maybe my helmet's looking a little bit flat at the top you can just add on a bit more curve over the top because this is all in pencil at this stage and we'll be rubbing bits out later okay nearly there so I'm going to turn my uh, page back round all right a couple more details to add a couple of little touches so my catapult and maybe yours too is all made out of wood so we can draw a little bit of wood grain nice and easy to do don't you don't need to go too mad on this all I do is I just do a few wiggly lines really so you see what I mean I might do a little curved sort of spiral line and you don't need to do too many on each bit but it just gives the impression of texture okay so you can do the same on here I might do a little circle and then a larger circle around it then even larger and then it's just it's sort of expanding out from that center point which is like a, a knot in the wood okay and do the same here I do a few little squiggles down lovely do one along the main beam and the, the good thing to do is to try and follow the line of the beam okay so I wouldn't usually sort of be doing wood grain like that I'd more sort of follow it along and don't worry if all these bits overlap at the minute that's fine okay now if you get something a bit weird that's round like this well something I, I often do is I'll make a little knot in the wood and we'll do like I did a minute ago one central circle and the circles start off quite close together as they get bigger they get further apart okay and we'll do it along the bottom I'm just going through this quite quickly but you can take your time uh, a few little squiggles there don't worry if they're not perfect it's all it's all random wood grain on on lumps of wood is random anyway uh, or it looks at anyway uh, nice and organic as they say all right so let's also let's look at these wheels I haven't put any wood grain on these wheels yet because we're going to make the wheels up of some planks so I'm just going to draw some diagonal lines on this left hand wheel coming across and I'll probably end up with sort of three or four planks you see these planks now make up that wheel okay and I'll do the same on the other one but I'm gonna have the diagonal go a slightly different way because it looks like these look more like independent wheels like they've been put on at different times or it's been rolled forwards and and one wheels gone around a little bit more than another uh, it's just a, a little bit of detail so do a little plank there wonderful excellent oh, throwing one for luck how about that all right and then you can add on some wood grain onto those and again I suggest going in the line of the planks that you've drawn there we are just very rough same on the other side follow the line of the planks a little bit and there we have it so that's the pencil done as you know by now if you've watched some of the other videos that we've done it's time to grab your pen so grab whatever black pen you have fine liner biro felt tip whatever and let's get drawing okay on to this wheel here or in fact hold that thought because you might want to add a little bit of movement to this bucket so I'll very quickly show you that if you want you can either have your cat just sat there like that ready to go or if you want the the catapult sort of half firing already and this cat's about to get launched to go and catch himself some birds just do some little flicks down here again don't worry if they're not exact you maybe do some off the bottom of the tail and all the rest of it very quick flicks and then a couple of little humps here will just give the impression of movement okay right now you've done that now it's time to get the pen I'm getting ahead of myself there and I'm gonna take this pen I'm gonna draw the wheels first so I'm gonna start the center little circle and you just trace some of these bits around and the outer circle awesome round we go round 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 and we'll do the other wheel I mean obviously be kind of pointless to stop there now all right Whoa. 
There we are. Don't worry. Hopefully your uh, wheels will be slightly neater than my very dodgy right hand one. I'm not quite sure what I was doing there, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to draw the planks whilst I'm here. So one straight plank across, another one, and another one. And I think I had a little fourth line there. Yep. Same on the other wheel. Draw your planks in. Marvellous. Did I do a little one on the end there? Maybe not quite. Okay. You can even draw a bit of wood grain if you like. So don't worry if you're not tracing over exactly the wood grain you drew earlier. It's all fairly rough. And um, wood grain is all random and yeah, it doesn't matter. The only thing I would suggest is don't go too crazy on the wood grain. Less is more, as they say sometimes. Uh, I don't know who says that. I'm not sure I've really heard that many people say it, but um, they tell me it's true. All right. Now we're going to draw this bottom beam. Okay. But we're not going to go, unlike before, where we overlap the wheels and everything else, we're not going to this time. So I'm going to actually start at the wheel. I'm going to come out, down, and across. And then I'm going to come across until I meet this spoked winch wheel and stop there. Same on the bottom. Every time I meet the spokes, I'm going to stop and then start again the far side of the spokes. Okay, and I'm going to stop when I get to the wheel. Same on the right hand side. Don't go over the wheel. There we are. And where that spoke starts, just draw across. Okay. Right, because this little spoky contraption in the middle is getting in the way a bit, let's draw him in next. Okay. So I'm going to draw that central circle, next circle outside it a little bit. Okay, and then the larger sort of 50p piece sized wheel there cool okay draw the spokes with a bit of a sort of sausage shape again you can just trace those if you've drawn them in already which uh, if you haven't where were you okay firing around those too easy all right cool now we're going to do this central pillar and we're going to trace this pillar from the top of the, the wheel that we've drawn here, right the way up and down. Okay, so you'll see what I mean here. Oh, if the pen works. We're going to come up, across, and down the far side. Okay. Now let's get these diagonal supports done. So you can just trace the outline of this left-hand side one. Nice and easy. All right, and then on the right hand side one, where this overlaps here, just go right over it. Just go right over that launching arm, right over there, you see what I mean there? And the other side, whoops, helps if you do a straight line. Don't worry if you don't do a perfectly straight line, because the good thing about this is you can cover it up with uh, making it look like it was intentional, which of course all, all of this is. All right, now we are going to draw this firing arm along here. The beam that the bucket attaches onto and I'm going to stop when I get to this central pillar okay so I'm going to start here and get to that pillar and stop and draw the under side of the beam get to the pillar and stop I'm going to start again on the far side but again I'm going to stop when I get to this diagonal beam and there and then start above all the way out to the bucket all the way out to the bucket again great okay so let's uh, let's just quickly draw in some more of our wood grain uh, texture and patterning that we're putting on here again just be loose and rough with it that's fine you don't need to spend too long on this bit and the more sort of random it looks the more organic the more real it looks it's just a nice little touch to add on okay you do a knot like I'm doing here a knot in the wood. Let's see how you go. Um, coming down here. Lovely job. And now for the long beam one, the launching arm. Remember, once you've drawn this, if you do colour it in, or even if you don't colour it in, it'd be awesome if you guys could uh, tag Bulderbeast on at Bulderbeast Art or on Facebook or at Bulderbeast on Instagram because we'd love to see what you've drawn 
and we're hoping to put together uh, all the various pictures that people have sent in that they've drawn because um, it's, uh, it's it's great to see and we'll, we'll put them up on the on our Facebook and Instagram pages so uh, do send them over we want to see them um, cool okay um, something I've noticed which you can do if you want you can draw in the bottom ground line here if you'd rather not have that that's fine I'll just scribble mine in here you can use a ruler again if you like Whoopa. nice absolute doddle okay now onto the bucket so I'm gonna come where that sort of cat's arm comes across I'm gonna start on the top of the bucket from there and come out and where that arm meets the bucket on his other arm I'm gonna come out to the edge of the bucket there okay I do our semicircle underneath easy peasy all right and then we'll do the cat's body next, I think probably best next step. So coming up on the cat's body, on the outside there, that sort of egg shape we drew earlier, same on the other side. And then we're gonna trace round these sort of sausage shaped arms that we drew earlier. I say they're sausage shaped, they are cat arm shaped, obviously. Okay, that's one and that's two. And then don't forget, because I've done it in the past, to draw the top of the bucket across there in the middle. Awesome. You can put on the little uh, lines for those little paws. Okay. All right, let's head to the face. So I'm gonna start from the inside and work outwards on the face. So I'm gonna draw his little triangular nose. Everybody loves a little pink cat nose. Okay, I'm gonna draw his little smiling cheeks coming round all right and his ears those are not his ears those are very definitely his eyes uh, try and draw the eyes in how about that instead circle there a circle there and a dot and a dot okay now we're coming on towards the, onto the helmet now and you can see this ran this sort of line that was the outline of the head before ignore that okay You'll see what I mean in a moment, in that I'm going to draw the bottom of the helmet across here and on the other side, all right? And I'm gonna follow this inner line round the top of the helmet, okay? And when we follow the outside of the helmet line, we're gonna stop when we get to the ears. We don't wanna overlap the ears. So out we come, I'm gonna stop when I get to that ear and I'm gonna stop when I get to that ear and I'm gonna carry on again on the far side of the ears to draw the rest of the helmet. Cool. Okay, let's draw those ears in. So I've got my nice big triangular ears there. Let's have another one on the far side. And remember a little bit of a curved line at the bottom of the ears to make the bottom of the triangle just makes it look like it's a uh, an ear poking out of a curved helmet. Just, just a little touch there, okay? And let's give his, give him, yeah, can't speak, give him his go fast stripe helmet. Awesome, if you want to be even more decorative, you can color in the helmet, whatever sort of color you like and do several stripes if you want. You do a rainbow helmet, you can just go mad with it, have fun. Um, now, chin strap, all right, we've already got our circle come around here. I've got a relatively thin pen. If you've got a nice big, thick, chunky pen, then you can just do one line coming round and it should look like a, a nice chin strap. I'm gonna do my chin strap coming round and I'm gonna do another one just next to it to make it a bit thicker, to make it clear that that's an actual strap that is attached to him. I'm gonna give him his little chin holder there, the little bottom of the helmet there that he slots the chin into. All right, and let's give him his fuzzy fur on the outside with those zigzags again. So zig out, zig in, zigzag across. And the same on the other side. Don't worry if they don't match both sides symmetrically. I don't know many cats that match both sides symmetrically. I know ours doesn't. Uh, and I'm gonna draw on his tail next. So your tail might be more crazy than mine, might be curled round in a spiral. 
or it might be like this one or it might be straight out or however you like it doesn't matter okay all we've got to do on these bits then are a few little details so whilst we're here near this bucket let's just put a little bit of wood grain on here I'm doing a, a knot in the wood where I draw a little circle and then the circle gets progressively bigger as it comes out until it's sort of going off off the uh, bucket that's fine so again it's only rough let's give him his zigzags remember those zigzags from before to give him the stripes so little one there okay on one side and the other marvelous and they're only rough doesn't matter give him his stripy tail lovely nearly there and then very important cats have got to have their whiskers so where we drew the whiskers before come out quite quickly when you draw these in pen because it will make them look a little bit more whiskery and and sort of you know they're so thin that you don't ideally want two thick lines but if you're not confident just whipping out from the from his face that's fine take your time just uh, and don't worry if you don't exactly copy the lines that you drew before so flick out two three and one two three got nice big whiskers there the only other thing to do is if you want to add in these movement lines you can again flick down quite quick if you want I'm just gonna go whoopah nice okay last little bits there and do a couple of little humps okay there we have one cat catapulting into the air to catch himself some birds so you know the drill by now last little bit take your rubber if your pen is still a little bit wet on the page just leave it to dry for a second or two ideally you don't want to be smudging things too much but my my pen has dried it's a very quick drying pen this one so I'm just going to rub out the pencil that we drew on here before and any lines that we haven't gone back over in pen will be rubbed away leaving us with a very cool picture of an ye olde style catapult when I say ye olde I mean several hundred years uh, or older possibly uh, catapult with a cat in the bucket being catapulted I mean everything about this is designed for catapults and there we go it's looking good I'm gonna brush away with a little rubber shavings and there you have our catapult well done everybody excellent I hope you've all enjoyed that and I hope you've got a great little picture at the end of it I'm sure you all will have because you're all uh, brilliant artists and have mad skills across the board from what I've seen so far so uh, well done well done thank you so much for watching today um, hope you like your drawing uh, take it away color it in uh, you can add on some extra details if you want you can draw another one with with even uh, put a couple of cats in the bucket if you make a big enough bucket do whatever you like um, what would make me happier than if a, a cat got the cream um, would be if you shared a picture of the cat you drew uh, of the catapult you drew by tagging us on uh, Facebook on at Builderbeast Art or on Builderbeast uh, Builderbeast's Instagram page at Builderbeast um, and if you enjoyed today then please tell your your friends and family where they can find the video um, and there'll be another drawing tutorial next week uh, our fourth one where we'll be drawing some spring chickens so uh, given how today went with a catapult you probably got half an idea of what spring chickens is going to involve okay awesome well done everybody top marks hoping you see some thumbs up there cool and uh, yeah catch you later adios guys